Hey, welcome to this week's episode of the Content Creation Made Easy podcast. I am your host, Jen Liddy. Today, we're talking about something that I don't think I've really ever addressed on the podcast before. It's not because it's not important. It's just because I apparently was waiting for the right person and I found that person. We are talking about websites today. We're going to be talking about your homepage. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about about pages. But today, I have an expert to help you wrap your head around what should be on your web page. Now, if you're somebody who's thinking I'm clicking off because web pages are archaic and only dinosaurs use them, that's a false falsity. We're going to unpack that today why your web page, your home page needs to be updated and then how to make it updated. One of the things I wanted to say before we get started is I know that you have a specialty in your thing, you have an expertise, you have a lot of training and Sometimes when we're an expert or we have an expertise, we get really mired down in giving people a lot of information because we have so much to share. The reason I'm bringing my friend Heather Frechette Crowley on today is to talk to us about how to make our web pages, our home pages, and our websites less about the shoving information down people's throats and making it more of a kind of like a um like a come along with me and I'm going to make you feel comfortable on my homepage experience where you don't always have to be the one that's, you know, like shiny and doing a commercial for yourself, but it also doesn't have to be. The answer to that is not more information. So Heather, I just rambled on a lot. I'm hoping I was clear about what we're talking about today. Heather, I'm going to have you introduce yourself and what you do and let's get started talking about this stuff. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jen, for having me. Um, yeah, so as you said, I'm Heather Frechette Crowley. I own Root Marketing. Um, I am a marketing strategist and content creator for uh, B2C service providers. And I'm also a certified story brand guide. And for your listeners who are familiar with building a story brand, the book by Donald Miller, mm -hmm. uh, Marketing Made Simple, he has a number mm -hmm. of them. Uh, he also offers a certification course, and I am certified in that. So um, what that gives me access to is his proven framework for really creating content that is going to resonate with your audience. Yes. And that's why I wanted to have you on today, because sometimes when I fall on somebody's website, I'm either overloaded by the information that they have to share. Or I'm completely turned off because it's like the me, 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 me show. And there's got to be something in the middle. And I I know the work that you do. Heather and I are actually in a little mini mastermind together. We meet once a month to talk about these things. And I was like, can we please talk about freaking websites on content creation made easy? And so here she is. Um, so give us a little bit of insight. How does Story Brand? Mm -hmm approach doing a website in a different in in ways that are different from like maybe how other website designers or creators would would approach them sure yeah so really the the crux of the story brand framework is that you bring your audience your customer into the story as the hero of the story mm -hmm. so you as the business as the brand you're not the hero um, that's not what we have traditionally been taught, right? Especially with subject matter experts who I know you work with. We're taught scream loud, right? Look at me. Um, but what happens is that turns people off. And when you position yourself and your brand as the guide who helps the hero overcome whatever challenge it is, um, that positions you as someone that others want to work with, right? It's it's like being at the cocktail party. Nobody wants to to be with the um, you know <laughs> boastful person in the corner. I think this goes so. I, I you know I liked Story Brand the minute I read that book. I was like mm -hmm. the, I I I, got, I bought into it. I really liked the approach of making your reader the hero, uh, bringing them into the story of your business. Um, it's not that hard to do. And it really goes along with my philosophy about like your copy always needs to be focused on what your audience is thinking and saying and needs. And because we're sometimes 
subject matter experts, or we've been doing this thing a long time, we can forget Mm -hmm. how to talk to our audience in their voice and in their language because we fall into our expertise language. Do you find that with the websites that you overhaul? Yeah, a hundred percent. So what's interesting is I think most of my clients fall into one of two categories. One is either they you know, bought into the, I've got to scream it loud and this is how great I am. And this is why you should choose me. Um, Or they're really into that subject matter expert camp where they just kind of put out all the information, right? And I know you always say word vomit, Jen, which I love. (laughs) They just put everything out there because their thought, and they don't necessarily mean to do it, you know, Mm -hmm. to be boastful and braggy, Mm -hmm. But it's if I put it all out there, then I know people will feel like I get them. And that's not the case. Because what happens is people are turned off. People don't read websites. They actually Mm. scan them. So when you have zero white space and your text blocks on your homepage, people cannot click out of there fast enough. Yeah. Um, And it's really what I call the curse of knowledge, right? It's that... They, they're they so, as you said, kind of mired down in the weeds that they truly can't see the forest anymore. Um, yeah. I want to go back to a f- more fundamental question that I forgot mm-hmm. to ask you, which yeah. is, do websites matter anymore? You know, when, oh, when, when, yeah. when somebody... When somebody meets you, they can give you their contact information or they send you to Instagram or their LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. So do websites matter and why? Yeah, I, they... A hundred percent still matter. Um, you know, it's it, things people used to say email marketing's dead. Now it's like, no, email marketing's the way to grow. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, you need to own your own real estate. So if you're only on social media platforms, they can go down as we've seen. Um, particularly that impacts you, especially if you're an e-commerce brand and you're only selling through a a third party platform and that goes down, you're shutting off the pipeline to your business. Um, That and also people, people will say, sometimes clients say, well, I get referrals, right? I'm, I worked with a chiropractor and she said, I'm, I'm almost 95% referrals. And I said, well, that's great. But you should know that when someone tells me about you, the first thing I do is I go online to find your website because I want to make sure you're legitimate. It you know gives you credibility. Um, and if I can't find your website, quite frankly, at this day and age, it is sketchy. I'm like, why do they not have a website? Yes, yes. I had to yeah. go get my um, car inspected. I was a month mm-hmm. past due. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody. So I went to look like locally, what are some places? And there was this guy that had like, you know, Greg's garage and Mm -hmm. he had no um, web presence whatsoever. He had like seven Google reviews. They were all glowing, but I'm like, (laughs) he doesn't even have a website. He has nothing, nothing, not even like a basic one pager. And it made me not like, I was like not going to go to Greg Mm -hmm. because I just couldn't go check him out. You know what? Something else that occurred to me while you were talking about socials, which never occurred to me before. If somebody goes to check you out on, say, Instagram, mm-hmm. and either there's like another person with a similar name or your account has been like hacked and duplicated, which mm-hmm. I see happen all the time. Yes. It's so hard to know. It, I, f- I find sometimes on Instagram, it's really hard to know, like, is this the right person? They looked different in their their profile picture or whatever. <laughs> yes, so yes. I feel like having a website is just, it gives you more gravitas. A hundred percent. And the other thing too, Jen, that you bring up a great point. If I'm checking on social media, if it's your Facebook page or your Instagram profile and your last post is mm-hmm. two months ago, that screams to me that you're not trustworthy. Mm-hmm. You're how, you know, why isn't this kept up to date? Whereas if I go to your website, I don't expect it to be updated every week right? because that information is foundational. Um, So certainly, well, websites are not set it and forget it, which I think Mm -hmm. we were once taught. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, we understand that the information on that page is really foundational. So we're not looking for your home site header to change every time we visit. Right. Okay. So we, we, if we are all on board that having a web page, web, I'm going to, I keep saying web page because all you and I are talking about today is that home page, right? Right. A a website can be incredibly deep and incredibly complex, but Mm -hmm. honestly, it really could just be a one pager. You really could just have everything you need on that one page, right? Exactly. And that, that's one of the things too, that I think deters people from taking on the website project, right? (laughs) Is they think it's going to be this like year long project that mm. um, is is going to be a million dollars and is never going to get done. And depending on your business, it can be, as you said, as simple as as a landing page, as yes. one simple page, telling them, you know, frankly, how they can contact you and what that next step is. Yes. But you need to ha- own some real estate out there in the interweb for sure. Yep. Okay. So then we've talked about that and we've talked about, um, you know, some of the mistakes that people make are falling in one mm-hmm. of these two camps. So let's talk about the story brand approach now, because I think people are like, oh, we get it. All right. Well, now what the hell are we going to do about it? Yeah. So Heather, yeah. what the hell are we going to do about it? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, yes. So the the story brand framework itself, as you know, Jen, because you've read the books, are is, is quite... Um, deep. You can go very deep into each of those elements. And just to give your listeners who may not be familiar with it, just a really brief synopsis. Essentially, um, every story, every movie is based on these seven components, which is a hero who has a problem uh, that's preventing them from achieving something. They meet a guide who calls them to action gives them a plan that ends in success or failure, right? Yes. So, and it's so interesting, if you've ever heard Donald Miller speak, is he, any movie you can call out, he very oh, quickly is like, here you go. Yeah, um, he likes so, to use, yeah. um, like, uh, I'm not a Star Wars person, but mm-hmm. when he when I first read his book, I was like, oh my God, I was teaching English for a thousand years. <laughs> And here it is. It's like, it's Hamlet, it's Romeo and Juliet, but it's also Yoda and Luke Skywalker, right? Like it's, it's just all there. This story line Mm -hmm. that is focused on the hero who is not the business. (laughs) Exactly. Because we all want to be the hero in our own story, right? And that's not being, you know, conceited that that's frankly the way we're wired as humans, right? Yes. I don't get up in the morning and say, how can I make Jen the hero of her story today? Mm-hmm. I may think, how can Jen make me a hero, mm-hmm. right? Because that's the way our brains are wired. Yes. Um, so just, just flipping that. Yeah. So the helpful. audience is the hero and the business is the guide that helps Correct. them achieve their goal, overcome their challenge and get to the other side. Exactly. Yeah. Love it. So when you're helping people Mm -hmm. understand the framework, how is this different from like other frameworks that you see touted out there? Like, why did you love story, the story brand framework? Yeah, I read the book um, years ago and it was like, I say it's like a post-it note moment for me, right? Like so simple, but oh my gosh, how did we live without it? Right. And um, it really, you know, all through through my years in corporate America and you know advanced education, this was really kind of mind blowing for me. Like, mm-hmm. why didn't we think of this? Of yeah. course, this makes sense. Um, and and seeing the difference it's made for my clients is also huge. It it really is it creates tangible benefits. Yeah, because it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Because all our audience cares about is what's in it for me. And it's not that they're being jerks. It's like you said, this is how we're wired. So the story brand kind of framework sets them up to be their own hero. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how could somebody who's like, okay, Heather, I have not looked at my website for a long time. What are some of the steps they should be looking? What are the, some of the things they should be looking for and some of the steps they should be taking to kind of clean that up? Yeah, sure. So first and foremost, 
you have your homepage in your mind. We're talking about the header, the above the fold section, which is really everything that uh, the visitor sees when they first land on your homepage. So the header needs to answer three questions. Okay. The first is what you do. The second is how it helps me as the visitor. Mm -hmm. And the third is what I need to do to get it or to work with you. Yeah. So, so can you give us an example? Mm -hmm. how, how is this on your homepage? Yeah, that's a great question. For a second, I had to think about what does my homepage <laughs> I say? Knew you would. <laughs> I haven't looked at my website in months. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yes. So actually it says, I'm recalling now, um, it's um, marketing that creates demand. Mm -hmm. And then there's a subhead that talks about from strategy through execution, mm -hmm. you know, we expand your reach so that you can focus on doing what you do. Yeah. Um, and then there's a, a book now button. Mm -hmm. And those are really, we think oftentimes that we need to be super clever and um, maybe alliterate, right? Come up with things that are catchy. But what happens is we often do that at the expense of clarity. Totally. Yeah. And so in our minds, we think, what are you talking about? How do you not get that? That's hilarious, right? Or that's spot on. And the visitor, you literally have three seconds. And if they don't get that in three seconds, they're gone. I'm thinking about some of the websites I've seen something like, you know, i um, just trying to think of what it might be like, empowerment for old <laughs> souls. Like, I don't know what the frick that is. What are you talking yes. about? What is this? Yes. Uh, what, what is this? Is this? Right. And yeah, it's so funny that you say that because one of the industries that I do a lot of work with is coaching. And so I see it a lot in that industry. It's very flowery language, yeah. particularly coaches who work specifically with women. Mm -hmm. um, it's generally something like be a better version of you or align yourself. I don't know what that is. I don't, right. I don't is it, know. Or is that, that chiropractic is. or is that coaching? Right. Exa <laughs> exactly. So, you know, if you were to say, I help women find jobs they love, then I can self identify and raise my hand and say, yeah, that's what I want. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. It's, it's interesting because one of the things that Donald Miller says, I swear I'm not getting a kickback from him, but it's just so, <laughs> so crystal. You're definitely he said, not. You're paying them. Yeah, to yes, that. exactly. Okay. He said, um, you know, it's not the best product or service that consumers buy. What they buy is the one that's communicated the clearest. Doesn't he and call I it think, the grunt test? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, that that is his homepage. Yes, his above the fold, which I refer to as the decaf test. But yes. <laughs> right. Can I understand this before I had my morning coffee? Exactly. You, so it's what do you do? Mm -hmm. Who do you help? And like, what's the outcome that they get? How? Yeah, exactly. So it's what you do, how it helps the visitor, and then what the visitor needs to do to buy your service, to get in touch with you. So um, I would love anybody who's listening to this, you could press pause here and you could think about how do I say that? And am I saying it in my client's language with their words? Am I clear? Am I crisp? Am I precise? And do I do all of that before they even hit their first scroll? Yeah. Yeah. A great way to do that too, Jen, is if you're, you know, at a coffee shop, just say to someone, pull up and say, can you tell me what, what this website does, right? Oh, yeah. Tell them that you're doing research. You can't ask your spouse because yeah. they're like, oh my gosh, I've heard it a billion times, right? Don't ask <laughs> your don't mom, don't anymore. ask your friends. Yeah. Yeah. So really fresh eyes is Beautiful where, idea. is where the education comes from. That's a great call. Okay. So then once we kind of clean up our header mm -hmm. and we've got that call to action, like whatever that is, book a call, mm -hmm. download my freebie, whatever you've got them got going on mm -hmm. for your business, what happens then to kind of keep them interested? Yeah, certainly. So in, um, in the homepage, on the homepage rather, you're going to have that direct call to action in the upper right corner. So when people view websites, their eyes generally follow a Z pattern. So they're going to start in the upper left. It's a great place to have your logo, mm -hmm. scan to the right, and then so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it's really important to have that direct call to action in multiple spots as they scroll down that page. Okay. So and the we same want call it, to action? Yes. We want that direct call to action to be exactly the same. If it's book a call in a red button, then it needs to be book a call in a red button every place it's shown on the home page. Um, I'm also it's a way to guessing... short circuit our brains kind okay. of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not being flowery, not being cutesy, not being catchy. Right, right. None of this. Um, okay. Learn more. I I don't know what that means. I probably don't have time to learn more. What I have time to do is book a call. Yes. So very specific um, and very strong language, and that's why it's referred to as that direct call to action. Okay. Um, and then what comes kind of after that? Now they started scrolling. They're interested. They're like, oh, this is mm -hmm. what I need. This person gets me. I'm not really ready to book a call. There'll be a button down later for yes. me. Uh, what else is on this homepage? Yeah, so we want to be sure to really hit on the um, seven components of the story, which is, we call it a brand script. It's essentially okay. your brand narrative. Um, so you want to be able to call out what are what are the problems that they're facing? Um, mm -hmm. we, we want people to be able to read it and say, wow, this brand gets me, they can help me. Um, and again, it's, it's helpful to be specific here. Yes. Another thing that we want to do is we want to add as a, as a guide, you want to include some information about yourself in terms of empathy and authority, right? Mm -hmm. So every brand is a personal brand on some level. So I need to be able to express empathy because, it, right, people don't do business with businesses. People do business with people. So you want to be able to get that across. And you don't have to, you know, write a paragraph about why it's important for you to work with women looking for new positions. But you just need to have a couple of statements saying, look, I've been there. I know what it's like to be a woman over 50 looking for a new position in corporate America. I get it. Um, and here, I, you know, and exactly, you're nodding your head. And that's exactly what we want the visitors to do. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that, we just need to add authority, Jen. So that's okay. things, you know, your years of experience, okay. your qualifications. And again, this part doesn't need to be enormously in depth. Or like the story, like I was born and, you know, like we don't need to go exactly. there. We'll go more in depth on your about mm -hmm. page, but your homepage sure. needs to have your presence. Yes. Yes. You're just, the guy. Just a little bit. Because you're the guy. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yes. And so exactly. Just, just a little that. bit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then what you're going to do, as I said, you have that direct call to action. And then you mentioned a downloadable PDF, which we refer to as, um, as a transitional call to action. Oh, it's, okay. bas it's basically, you're right. They're not ready to book that call, but you want to give them something else to kind of put them in your funnel. You want to give them something that prevents them from closing the relationship before it ever starts. Okay. And so, that, so far I'm <laughs> here. You, they land on your page. They know what you're about. They move into kind of this roller coaster of like, Hey, here's some shit you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I really get you like that emp empathic approach or the compassionate approach to like, I, I see your problem. I see your struggle, whatever mm -hmm. that is. Yes. Uh, this is why I'm uniquely positioned to help you as your guide and move you mm -hmm. through that. Here's another transitional call to action. That might be something softer, like a downloadable PDF or some mm -hmm. mid move, like, you know? Yes. Okay. And then what happens after yeah. that? So one of the most important pieces that so many of us miss, myself included, before reading the book years ago, is that we don't give people a plan. So mm. the the goal of the plan is how do I get to work with you? What, yeah. what happens? I bridge the gap between where I am on this side of the river and where I'll be on the other side of the river after working with you. Yeah. And this is an area where people sometimes um, lose lose sight of the bigger goals. So if I'm a real estate agent, my plan might be book a call, um, you know, we'll, we'll discuss your ideal home, 
three, get ready to move in. Again, they're very high level. Yes. But the goal is to be able to create that bridge between where they are now and where they'll be after working with you. I'm chuckling because I'm thinking about what somebody who's like a very nuanced, deeply experienced subject matter expert, like how they might get screwed up by these three yes. steps, be like, you know, book your call on a on a time where you have the most compassion for yourself. And then we're going to unpack all of your childhood trauma in our first call together. And right. then like, 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 no, 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 no. We're talking like sweeping broad, like book a call. Yes. Let's yes. chat uh, and help you like figure out whatever it is. You want to absolutely. Out absolutely. And it's okay to have kind of broad headers, you know, book a call yes. and then a sentence beneath it, mm -hmm. you know, we'll discuss where you are today. Mm -hmm. Step one, two, three, we, Beautiful. we, three is ideal. We don't want to have more than four okay. because what happens is at that point, we just look at it and we're like, Whoa, this is too <laughs> difficult to work with this person. I'm going to go to Greg's garage <laughs> who may be working out of his van, right? We're just going to do that because it's easier. <laughs> totally. Um, is, is that the end or like, is there kind of just like a wrap up for people? Yeah. So it, what's interesting is you need to, um, as I said, kind of sprinkle in parts of each of those components. And aside from the header, which needs to answer those three primary questions, the order can be flexible. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I love that. And as long as you have, you know, it's kind of a recipe. As long as you have something from each of those components on the homepage, mm -hmm. it's it's going to invite the hero into the story. So, um, and, and there's like mm -hmm. some action steps that they can take on this page. Yes, exactly. And when you look at the page, you're going to have that that direct CTA we in the story brand community often refer to it as the cash register, right? Because mm -hmm. that is leading people directly to you. So sometimes we have it up in the upper right hand corner and that's it because yeah. we're like, isn't that redundant? No, it's not redundant. And particularly 90 something percent of people are probably scrolling on their phone. You want to avoid making them scroll back up. Mm. So because you know, oh, I oh, it's my stop on the subway. I'll get to it later. Nope, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Oh yeah, yeah. Want to yeah. make it easy. So I have a question. In a lot of content, mm -hmm. there is <clears throat> an appropriate time for aspirational content. Like you and I already talked about mm -hmm. where you're going to talk about their problem, struggle, pain, issue. Is there a place where you can kind of turn that around on a homepage where you can talk about like? kind of imagine ifing with them? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So that would be, would fall into the success bucket. Okay. So essentially every story you call someone to action, if they go ahead and follow your plan, they're going to end up in the success bucket. If they decide not to, they're going to end up in the failure bucket. Okay. So, and, and failure here, sometimes clients, back away because they say, no, I, I don't want to fear monger. That's yep. not my style. And, and believe me, we don't have to fear monger, right? Yep. It's like salt in a recipe. You just need a little bit because what happens is if I start telling you that if you don't choose root marketing, you're going to live in a van for the rest of your life, <laughs> you know, <laughs> alone, you just, it's too much. You, you don't need that, right? We have enough stressful news in the, in the uh, world today. Yeah. So just a little bit, and and this is important. I want people to understand that failure sometimes just looks like the status quo, right? Yes. It's me never getting my course done. It's it's me having to write a book on my to-do list for 20 years. It's Not getting your car inspected in time yes. before you get a ticket, <laughs> which is what I'm driving around with my fingers crossed every day. Yes, yes. I was in the same position a week ago. But um, yeah, and then in terms of your aspirational identity, that would be the success bucket, right? Gotcha. What they want to be, how they want to feel after working with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, something like imagine having having a job you look forward to waking, you wake up and look forward to going to mm -hmm. where you didn't have to spend three years trying to find it and with a bunch of, you know, trial and error. That's that's how I help you cross the mm -hmm. bridge, basically. And so there yes. is space for that mm -hmm. on the homepage. Yes, definitely. I love 
the idea that you can kind of play with these because some people feel really uncomfortable leaning into that problem part, that challenge mm-hmm. part that, and they would love to start with the more aspirational part. And I yeah. think that this gives people kind of permission to move it around, except for that top part, which is non-negotiable because people mm-hmm. need to know they're in the right place. Yes. So um, this is a really clear outline. One of the things I would love for people to go do is look at your homepage to get an idea of this. So they can see it very clearly mm-hmm. on your homepage. So can you give us your homepage? Yes. Yeah. It's rootmktg.com. Um, and when you go there, you're going to see a really clean, sparely designed homepage. I know because Heather helped me with my homepage last year and I used hers a lot for my own <laughs> reasons. Um, and it's really clear and easy. And then you can model that. But I do want to say, this is one of those jobs that you'll put on your list that'll sit there for 18 months. And mm-hmm. next year at this time, actually a year and a half from now, you'll be like, oh my God, I never freaking did my website. Heather helped me last year. And I'm going to say something. I can be snobby about, <laughs> I can be snobby about my, um, my, my copy. Cause I, you know, I fancy myself. I'm a good writer. And so I was like, oh, she, you know, Heather offered to help me story brand my website. And I was like, oh, yes, of course I'm taking you up on that. But I was like, <laughs> I wonder how she's going to help me. Well, like she freaking helped me people. Like she really, really knows her stuff. And so not only is like she giving generously here, and if you're a DIY kind of person, I think that you could really get just like this podcast episode can be very helpful, but I know that you're also offering an audit. So this is like somebody who's an expert's eyes on your website. And then tell us how that audit works, because maybe people don't want to hire, you know, a whole makeover, but maybe Mm -hmm. they just can't see what they can't see. So tell us about the audit. Yeah, sure. Thank, um, thank you for those kind words. I mean, well, so much. I had coming, to admit I was snobby in order to give you that compliment. <laughs> I love it. What a jerk. Um, <laughs> no, stop. Stop. I was scared at first when you said what I'm going to say. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Let me insult you on the podcast. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So I offer a homepage audit, which does exactly what you just said, Jen. It's my eyes on your homepage. So I create a loom video of your page. It's not just, you know, general uh, suggestions, which Mm -hmm. we've definitely gone over today, which is useful. It's a video of me on your homepage. And I go through and give you specific suggestions um, and really provide actionable insights onto why I'm making those suggestions. Mm -hmm. And the homepage audit is designed for people who are DIY, who just say, just give me the basics. Um, And it's, you know, it's designed so that you can implement it yourself. You don't need to to turn around to the web designer um, and, and, and deal with that. You can certainly make them yourself. Mm, this is a service that I offer, not with web pages, but with like mm-hmm. sales pages and copy in general for a program that I'm a copy coach in. And giving people Loom feedback where you're talking them through their own copy and explaining why this works or explaining why this doesn't work. And here's a suggestion of what might work better. It's absolute gold for people because they, it's not just like you've taken it and edited it and it's now like, thank you so much. You did it for me. It's like, you've taught them a way of thinking about it that they have forever now. And I think that's why audits like this are so valuable and not a lot of people do them. So mm-hmm. I wanted to share, and I know you've got a great price for our listeners. I think it's $99. Yes. You're, yeah, you're spot on $99. And I'm sure you'll put the link into the I show notes, will. Jen. I certainly um, will. Yeah. And it's, and the super thing is to, I, I get it out within three days because I, as a consumer hate, buying something. And then I'm like, what happened to Amazon Prime? I want it here <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Amazon Prime so ruined we, us yeah. for everything. <laughs> oh, it really did. Um, but yeah, so in that, and it's great. And even if you think, you know, here's the secret. Once you understand the formula, once you understand your brand script and what those seven buckets are, you apply those to every page. Mm-hmm. And yeah, exactly. Beyond your website, right? So totally. emails that you send your clients, mm-hmm. 
uh, social media posts, advertisements, everything you can oh, that's follow. A good point. That. That's a really good point, which I hope you're using in your own sales copy as a benefit, which is once I audit your web page, one of the benefits is you can take every single thing that you learn and start to use it in your content across your platforms. Mm -hmm. Because yes. then you understand your brand story, you understand your brand voice, you understand what your audience needs to hear, and you're not talking bullshit at them anymore. Right, right. Brilliant. And you will be, once you clarify that message and you yeah. really hone it in and you're speaking to the right audience, you will be amazed at how differently people respond. Oh, this was such good information, Heather. Is there any last piece of information or a nugget you need to drop on us that I didn't think to ask? Um, goodness. I know. Now I have to think back what I've been talking about for <laughs> you 40 gave minutes. Us so much good stuff. <laughs> I think, you know, it really all does come down to clarifying your message, right? Mm -hmm. And you can be clever, but not at the expense of clarity. So yes. if you can be both, that's a bonus. Bravo. But if you can only be one, choose clarity. I love that. Heather already told us her website, which is root mktg.com. She's at Root Marketing and she's got a really great little agency and she knows her stuff. She's a great writer. She's easy to deal with and she deals with a lot of different types of people. So I highly recommend going to check her out. You can reach all of her things there at her website and I will put the link to it in our show notes plus the link. I think they can go there. Can they get the audit there? Uh, yes, they can actually, if they go to my Instagram page, which is at root underscore MKTG. And there will be a link that will take you to the audit. Okay. I will put that, I will put all of those links in the show notes. Heather, thank you for, well, thank you for investing in yourself because I know that doing this story brand marketing thing was a huge leap. And um, it's a really cool thing to have seen you make the decision and then become such an expert in it and speak so fluently about it. I love it. And I've seen firsthand what an amazing job you do. So thank you for sharing oh, it with us thank today. You, I'm Jen. really thinking people can it. take action uh, from everything you shared. Yes, that that's my hope. That's my yes, hope. That's what awesome. we all need to do. You're awesome. awesome. Thanks so much, Jen. Take care. Hey, listener, thank you for being here all the way through. I really appreciate you listening. I know there's a bajillion podcasts out there. So you choosing to listen to Content Creation Made Easy is like, I'm just very grateful. So thank you so much. And if you could just leave a podcast review and just say, hey, I really like this podcast, I would appreciate it. We are trying to grow this year to get more people, more people's ears on the, on the podcast. So I'll see you next time. Bye.